I can spot an AI generated user interface from a mile away. They like to use the interfont, seem to love purple gradient. They're always really boring. In this video, I'll show you three techniques to make user interfaces people actually want to use. I'm going to redesign this boring UI three times, and you can let me know which one you think the best redesign. Let's go. The first technique is prompting in a slightly different way for UI designs. The team at Cloud released this really interesting article. I'll link to it in the description. It's definitely worth a read. It starts off with describing what the problem is. And I think it's useful to really understand that, to understand how to avoid it. It says the problem is distributional convergence. Basically what that means is that when it trains the model, the data it's using is safe design choices. Those that work universally and offend no one. And because of that, when you ask for a new application without specifying the design, it starts to just default to that kind of design. And it thinks that's the right answer. It thinks that's a high probability answer. So it gives you a boring UI back. Then the article goes on to describe the steerability challenge and how you can actually steer Claude to avoid those kind of outcomes. It talks about things and it gives prompt examples for things like typography, um, themes, and then it gives them before and afters using these techniques. I think they were pretty revealing. So for example, for the SAS landing page, it has this one from before, which is you know pretty generic, shows the purple backgrounds. And then when you go to the after, it gives you something much more interesting. Same for the blog layout and the admin dashboard. And then at the end of the article, it gives some really useful resources on how to implement all the things in the article. It gives you a front-end design cookbook and also a new front-end design skill for Claude. If you go to that, it's gonna to link to the GitHub and we can see the skill here. If you look in the skill MB file, this is built for a Claude code for a skill for Claude, but you can use this anywhere. You can use this in cursor, you can use this in Gemini CLI, not limited just to, to Claude. At the end of the day, it's just a markdown file. I thought it was funny inside this skill. It says avoid using generic AI slop aesthetics. There's something ironic about telling an AI not to produce AI slop, but if it works, it works. So let's download this skill. We can just go download the raw file here. So I'm gonna rename it to front end skill. MD, and I'm going to add it to my project folder. I'm going to use Cursor today as Cursor 2 has some features that I think will make this a bit faster. I'm going to start by asking it to run a dev server and open the application in the Cursor's internal browser. This is a new thing in Cursor 2 where you can have the agent actually control the browser too. And we're going to use that because then once it's developing our front end, redesigning it, we can actually reference the UI and take screenshots, etc., and look at all the logs. Now that that's up, we can see my original UI design. It's very functional, it works well, but it just has no design considerations. So I just made it just work. And so because of that, it just screams like an AI application. What I'll do now is I'm gonna keep my model at Sonnet 4.5. That's my favorite one for coding. And then I'm gonna to add to the context that markdown file we just downloaded. So just select frontend skill.md and then just simply say redesign the UI using these principles. Let's let this cook for a few minutes and just see what it comes up with. And this is what it's come back with. And we can see it's used the internal browser to take screenshots, to iterate through the process and to check its work. So let's open this up in a separate browser. So it definitely depends on your taste, but I like this one much better than the original. Much bolder colors. Now it's got these nice hover over effects. It's got these nice animations now. It even has an animation when you load the page originally. In my opinion, this gives a much nicer user experience to someone using this business application. And then once you're happy with that new UI and that new style, you should go back into cursor. Say something like, I love this new style. Create a style.md file to preserve this style guide. Now what it's gonna do is take everything it changed, make that into a concise style guide so you can use that going forward when you implement new pages in your application. And it's gonna save in this new style.md file things like typography, color palettes, how to do the information card. Now that it's created this style.md file with all that information, we can use this going forward. We don't need to worry about that front end skill anymore. For this application, we can just use everything in here, keep building. Second and third technique involve getting the AI reference material, but there's a big difference in quality of that reference material. The best quality is actually cascading style sheets from the application itself, like the actual code. But oftentimes you don't have that. Like in this case, I'm on Dribbble, and this is the most popular UI design website around. There are thousands and thousands of different design ideas, design systems. And on here, you can't actually get like the CSS for these applications or the code. You just really get screenshots. In this case, I'm looking for web application UI design and just looking through all the popular ones here and just seeing if any jump out to me. 
like I, it could use in this application. And this one here looks very similar to what I'm trying to do. It's got a list of invoices, which is kind of what my application is. And I like this design. It's really nice and simple. So what I'm going to do is just take a screenshot of this and take that over to cursor. Now I've rolled back my application to the original. And this time I'm going to say redesign this application to conform with the design from this screenshot. And then I'm going to paste in that screenshot. And I'm going to use GPT 5.1 codex this time because I think it does a slightly better job with image analysis. And I find when you use this method, you generally get a less accurate result than copying code as reference. So try to stick with simpler designs like this one. But let's see in this case, let's see what it comes back with. Here's what it came back with. It's totally redesigned this application. Let's open it side by side with what we had in Dribble and just see how accurately it did replicate it. And I can even just tell at a glance, it's getting much, much better at taking reference screenshots and reproducing the user interfaces than it was in old versions of these models. But if we hop back over here to what we gave it as input, there is quite a few differences though. The menu is similar, but not quite as nice as the as the design. The invoices section is pretty close, but even things like the status here, we look at the original, it's actually slightly different. It has a drop down here where you can change the status. And even little things like the pagination on the bottom. In the original design, it's really nicely laid out here. In our new design, it's pretty good, but it doesn't have the forward and back button. And you can see on the circle here, there's a bit of a shadow on it, which doesn't really work very well. And so we can fix all these things with continued prompting. And the third way to make better UIs with AI would be to take references from actual live applications or UI frameworks. Like in this case, say I really like this UI and I wanted to re reproduce it. In Chrome, you can actually hit F12 and it'll open up the elements tab. You can go through all the different elements of this website, right click and you can say copy, copy styles. And what that's gonna copy is all the CSS at the actual code that the application's using. It'll just give you things like the font family, order with all that stuff that AI really needs to be able to give you the same look and feel as that site. But from my experience, that can still be kind of time consuming and tedious. So probably a better option would be to use an existing UI framework. And the one I like the best is Shad CN. And the reason I like it, well, it is a little bit on the generic side. You have all the components you need to build future parts of your application. You're not gonna have to reinvent anything. It also has themes, so you can select different themes with colors that make it come to life somewhat. If you look at the dashboard here, I can see this section here is actually perfect for my application. This style and these components look pretty good to redo my application using exactly this. What I'm gonna do first is copy my theme here, the screen theme. I'm gonna re-baseline my application and cursor back to the old UI. And this time I'm gonna say redesign the UI using exclusively Shad CN components. Make it look like the sample dashboard using the green theme. And then I'll paste in that CSS I got from the Shad CN website. And now I'm giving it a concrete code to work with, actual CSS and actual UI framework. In this case, the results of that were actually a bit disappointing. It did implement the Shad CN components, so I think this will be more steerable in the future. It doesn't really look anything like the dashboard that I wanted. I think this dashboard looks much better. I guess on the plus side, it did add this dark mode for me, so that's kind of cool. But the lesson I'm taking from this is if you want to use something like Shad CN, you really have to start right from the foundation. It can be a bit tricky to try to adapt it to an existing application. This is a bit disappointing, but generally speaking, if you can give the model CSS files, it's gonna help it figure out how to make the new UI in that style. And of course you can combine the three of them to get the UI you really want. For me, my favorite one was that first one where we used the Claude skill to redesign. I really liked that redesign it did. I'm actually gonna use that as the base, that style guide as the base for building out that application to make it a production ready application. And I'll be doing videos on that coming up. So if you're interested, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.